My mother took a piece of cloth, a yard or two, I guess. She cut it and she sewed it and made herself a dress. She wore that dress a year or two. Perhaps she wore three, then turned it on the other side and made it up for me. A long time it served me till it got old and shabby. And then she washed it clean and made a coat for baby Abby. And when the baby grew too big to wear it anymore, she cut it into carpet rags and hooked it for the floor. So in our new hooked carpet, those purple flowers you see are made of Sunday clothing of Mother, Abby, and me. Tonight, Land and Sea meets the Mat Makers. This is the old way that I'm showing you here now. But the new way is not really like this, not just like this. Loretta Smith grew up in the days before canvas and carpet. The kitchens of her childhood had rough board floors, board floors strewn with hooked mats. I remember when you go to work and take uh, a Monday morning, when Monday morning come after Sunday, you turn your mat over. You turn it over on the floor and, and keep it for the, until Sunday come again, Saturday evening come again. You went on the other side then. When they get dirty on the two sides, then you had to wash them out. The mats were part of almost every household, not just here in Boat Harbor, all over the Buren Peninsula. Strips of every kind of material literally hooked into brins. The merchants used to have peas and beans and stuff into the into the sacks or whatever, and uh, you get the, you get the brin bags from the store and potatoes. You wash them out and put them out on the line and dry them, and then you take them in and you go to work and you make a mat out of them. Loretta hooked her first mat when she was nine years old, a time when nothing was wasted. No shred of cloth lived its life to the finish till it found its place in a hooked mat. The material was exactly the same as what you wore. If you wore an old cotton dress, well, you take that old cotton dress when it's wore out and you use it in your mat. Your stockings you, you wear, you used to wear uh, cotton stockings then. Well, I mean, you wear them until the, the stocking was wore out, because you had to, because you couldn't afford to get any more. Well, then you take your old stack and while the you go into it, you cut it up and you hook it in your mat. And that's what your mat was made out of. Because, I mean, even a cup plot, them days, was used for a mat. Stuff like it's in a cup plot. What you would your dishes with today was, was used in. Even flour sacks found their way into Loretta's mats, washed, cut up, and hooked into the brin. In those days of board floors, mat making was more than a craft. It was a necessity. But with canvas and carpet came change. Women didn't need the floor mats anymore, so they gradually stopped making them. Eventually, it was only the older women who even remembered how. Women like Loretta, women who became the teachers when the Placentia West Mat Makers Association was formed. You wouldn't dream of walking on these mats in 1979, the development coordinator in this area felt there would be a market for hook mats if the craft were ever revived. And there is. The Placentia West Craft Shop is just one place that stocks the mats, and it sells hundreds every summer.
little stack here. I already I still got some uh, in storage up there, but most we have the design here that we got on the wall and a few more, right? Grace so, Lockyer manages so the craft shop and was the first president of the Mat Makers Association. How popular are they as compared to the other crafts that you have here? Oh, this is our number one seller. And our drying card as well. Yeah. So most people come in to say, well, I found you. You know, they're looking for this place where the mats is to. And then there's some people just comes in, like I have a little display outdoor sometimes, and, you know, curiosity gets to this them and they get to come in and see what's, what's going on. Are you surprised about the way the mats have taken off? Yeah, I really am. When I started at first, I didn't think. I said, why would anybody, you know, it was nice and everything, but, you know, why would somebody buy it? And, you know, I thought it might be a, a small market for it, but not like, no, not like a, a sector take now. I mean, it's more modern today than what we're seeing, you know. Well, I mean, they, when they when they match their mat out now today, I mean, they match it with a with a they got a a pencil, marking pencil for the mark it out. Well, we didn't have any of that. We used to use uh, we used to use um, in school we had the bottle of ink. Probably you remember you don't remember that, do you? Yeah. Had a bottle of ink. We used to use a pen then. Well, you sharpen it a, a stick then and put it down in the ink, and that's what you make your mat with. And more than once I opened the door of the old stove and pushed the stick in with the far brand, the call the far brand, and take it out and make the mat. More than once I did that one. So you marked it with the soot from yeah, the stove? Yeah, soot from the stove. Debbie Smith started mat making when she was 16, the year the association was formed. The first mat she ever saw being hooked was one of Loretta's. There are about eight mat makers now. Each one has her own design, usually seen from around the harbor, the pictures from their kitchen windows. So each mat is personal, like a cloth painting, each an authentic snapshot of this area, preserved in brin with cotton dresses and polyester pants. Debbie's come up with several patterns over the years, but her most popular by far is the one she's working on now, the one she calls Home Sweet Home, the scene inspired by the old stove in her mother's kitchen, the kitchen Debbie grew up in. We've had a lot of orders over the years, uh, since 79. There's, it's been uh, ordered constantly every year. We have so many orders for it, so... But a lot of people order this mat because they grew up with this stove in their kitchen as well. Many of the Placentia West mats have traveled a lot further than most of the mat makers probably will. England, Germany, Holland, the mats have gone all over Europe. And there's a constant market here at home as well. I've been doing this so long now that this second nature almost is... It's like any other craft that you do, you get used to it and it, you don't realize the importance or anything of what you're doing of carrying on any tradition in that sense. You don't think of it as a, something special like a painting or a sculpture or anything like that. You know, something with a lot of significance. It's just. It's just a piece of brin with rag hooked in <laughs> to us. But Debbie is aware she's among the last of the mat makers, the keeper of a craft that was in its twilight. I don't know. I think some of our uh, children will probably pick it up. I, I don't think it'll be lost completely because uh, 
as we get older, uh, they're getting older, and they'll, they'll get interested into it, same as I do. I have two daughters, so probably one out of them will, will wind up uh, met making someday, hopefully. Boat Harbor for a while and make our way up the northern peninsula, the home of a different kind of hook mat. We'll have the story of the Grenfell mat when land and sea return. Come in, man, I must try this. I didn't think that I would be able to do it any good, tell the truth, because I haven't done it so long, but uh, they pass us anyway. <laughs> it's no wonder they would pass. Margaret has had plenty of experience. Her and her husband raised 13 children here in Gricket, so there was always a need for used clothes. You'd have to, uh, everybody, woman, every woman then that was expecting a baby would uh, hook mats or do something like that and get a baby bundle in the store. If you got a 250 bundle, you would get, well, not as much as they ask now for baby showers, but enough to do with, you know. And say, like, if you had some things left from your baby before, you wouldn't throw that out. You'd put that away and to come in for another one like that. Anchored by a flat iron and her husband's old high chair, Margaret spent hours at this table, often by lamplight. Mat making was usually saved for the evening, after the day's chores were finally done. Like all the women in Gricket, Margaret worked toward Mat Day, the day the mats would be taken to the mission in St. Anthony. We'd have to uh, go in boat summertime, and if there was no boat going, you'd walk. And wintertime, you'd mostly go on dog team. If, uh, say, if I was going today, my husband and me were going out, we would take other people's mats, and if they was going, they would take mine as well. So you'd make special trips just to deliver the mission? Oh, then. yes. When you get them done. But it was unbelievable to know the clothes that you get for your family for four or five dollars at that time. You know? And the wool's coming back here again. Yeah, well, that's what you got to do. The wool come back. Okay. Don't like that? Mm-hmm. Really? Margaret's granddaughter will probably never know the need for used clothing. So what do you do when you want to finish that off? Just pull it up through like that? She'll never know those lean years when every dollar, every scrap of wool counted. That's what I'm going to do as a pastime. Mm -hmm. That way you won't be bored. Mm -hmm. To her, yeah, they're just bored. stories from the past, just like the story of the mission mat. How do you hold it like this? Yeah, okay, like that. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be as fast as you. If the hook mat has a future in Boat Harbor, women like Loretta Smith can take some of the credit. She not only grew up with the mat, she helped pass down the craft, helped establish a new generation of mat makers. There aren't many. In fact, the association has shrunk since it was first formed. Still, Loretta has faith in the old craft and in the mat makers that are left. I think my own staff, but I mean, you know, that they will carry it on. I really do here in Boat Harbor. I think they're going to carry it on. I can't speak for other places, but I think here in Boat Harbor they will. Because Bain Harbor, well, I mean, was at it too, but I mean, they, you know, they knocked that, but they didn't, they didn't follow on. But people here are proud of their match. Well, they are proud of their match, yes. And they're proud of the others. 